Hey brothers and sisters, so I was driving and I was listening to a video and the person in the video was talking about a threshing floor and threshing wheat to separate the wheat from the tares in that whole process. And it brought to mind a waking vision that I had a while back, I made a video about it, of hearing the number three at least three times and then I heard this booming voice say judgment and while I heard that I saw like a figure an angelic type figure in my doorway and then I shot up out of bed and my heart was racing because it was just so intense and so loud I could feel it in my spirit throughout my whole body and then I got up and on the way to the bathroom to kind of get myself together I heard the words threshing floor and so I've kind of always wondered about that vision and the meaning of it. Well, as I'm thinking about that driving down the road, I'm going home from a preschool graduation that we had tonight. And I look over to my left and a car passes me on the interstate and they had a sticker on the back of their car that said Jeremiah 33, three. And I'm thinking no and it's in Spanish so I don't even at the time I didn't remember exactly what verse that was and I know a little bit of Spanish but I didn't really have time to read it and understand which verse it was so I looked it up and it says call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know and so I just took that as a reminder that you know the Lord is pouring out his spirit and his gifts and dreams and visions and sometimes we don't understand them right away but he tells us to call to him and that he will reveal things that we do not know unsearchable things and we can have that kind of relationship with our father where it's a daily conversation calling out to him and and hearing from him in so many different ways just like a car passing me on the interstate with a scripture and I was just thinking about the 333 and wondering what in the world does that mean and then I see that there are no coincidences so I just thought that was really cool and I wanted to share that with you guys so this morning I got up to uh, pray and do my devotion and I felt the Holy Spirit remind me to go back and look at Jeremiah 33 3 and read around it and read the context to figure out you know what was happening when the Lord told Jeremiah to call to him and that he would show him great and unsearchable things that Jeremiah didn't know and so I continued to read and in the context uh, there was judgment and destruction by the Babylonians. And it says, next verse, For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says about the houses in the city and the royal palaces of Judah that have been torn down to be used against the siege ramps and the sword in the fight with the Babylonians. They will be filled with the dead bodies of the people I will slay in my anger and wrath. I will hide my face from the city because of all its wickedness. And that directly corresponds to me hearing the word judgment and then also hearing the words threshing floor. And when that happened during the waking vision, when I heard judgment, I could feel it in my bones and my spirit. It seemed audible to me because I, I actually heard it and felt it but then when I was getting up to just go get myself together I heard threshing floor in my spirit and it was different from hearing the word judgment so just to clarify that but if we continue to read what's beautiful is here we see a picture of judgment and wrath but then we see a picture of the Lord's mercy and grace and forgiveness using the wrath and the judgment to bring a remnant to himself and to bless Israel. And we know that that will happen at Christ's second coming. They will finally, many will finally recognize him as the true Messiah, the one that 
they have pierced and they will mourn. I believe it's in Zechariah. It says they will look on the one that they have pierced and mourn as if they're mourning for like a son or something like that. Here in ch verse 6, it says, Nevertheless, I will bring health and healing to it. I will heal my people and will let them enjoy abundant peace and security. I thought that was very interesting because we know that in 1 Thessalonians 5, 3, it says, While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman and they will not escape. Here it's really cool because it's a contrast between the world saying peace and security based on their own power and um, them seeing themselves as gods and the providers of peace and security, the leaders around the world uh, seeing themselves as the ones who bring about peace and security, but that's not true. We know that only God, only peace and safety and security comes from God the Father. He is peace. <laughs> And there is no peace without him. And here in Jeremiah 33, we see the true peace and security. It comes from the Father. And then it goes on to say, I will bring Judah and Israel back from captivity and will rebuild them as they were before. What does this remind us of? It reminds us of 1948. And I believe that was a, 1948 is a shadow, a type. Um, typology of the future millennial reign when the Lord truly brings Israel back and flourishes it and the Lord reigns there and it's fruitful and abundant and the whole world is looking to Israel and worshiping the Lord on earth. So we see them being fruitful now. Ultimately that will have its fulfillment in the millennial reign. And in verse 8, it says, I will cleanse them from all the sin they have committed against me and will forgive all their sins of rebellion against me. We know there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. And so here, it points to them accepting Jesus Christ as their Messiah because he is the offering once and for all. And without the shedding of his blood, there is no forgiveness. So I believe this is really pointing towards them accepting Jesus Christ as Messiah and his second coming and his millennial reign. It goes on to say in verse 9, Then this city will bring me renown, joy, praise, and honor before all nations on earth that hear of all the good things I do for it, and they will be in awe and will tremble at the abundant prosperity and peace I provide for it. In verse 10, this is what the Lord says. You say about this place, it is a desolate waste without people or animals. Yet in the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem that are deserted, inhabited by neither people nor animals, there will be heard once more the sounds of joy and gladness. Listen to this. The voices of bride and bridegroom and the voices of those who bring thank offerings to the house of the Lord. Wow, where have we heard that before? Check out this dichotomy of the voice of the bride and bridegroom here in Revelation 18, talking about the finality of Babylon's doom. It says, Then a mighty angel picked up a boulder the size of a large millstone and threw it into the sea and said, With such violence, the great city of Babylon will be thrown down, never to be found again. The music of harpists and musicians, pipers and trumpeters, will never be heard in you again. No worker of any trade will ever be found in you again. The sound of a millstone will never be heard in you again. The light of a lamp will never shine in you again. The voice of bridegroom and bride will never be heard in you again. The merchants were the world's important people. By their magic spell, all the nations were led astray. By their pharmakia, which is sorcery, the word pharmacy derives from this word pharmakia. So what does that remind you of? In her was found the blood of prophets and of God's holy people, of all who have been slaughtered on the earth. Wow, this is such a dichotomy of what we see in Jeremiah. This is the tribulation period when the Lord's wrath 
is released on this earth. But then when we look at Jeremiah 33, verse 11, here it's talking about the voice of bride and bridegroom being heard. And this is a picture of after the tribulation, when the millennial reign comes, the bride of Christ and the bridegroom being our Messiah, being Jesus Christ and the fruitfulness of Israel. In Jeremiah 33, where it talked about the nations coming to give thanks to God and Jerusalem being a blessing for the entire earth, it reminded me of this passage in Zechariah where it's talking about the millennial reign and the survivors of the tribulation, which could be uh, nuclear war, could be anything we know Prior to this, there was a plague that rotted out the mouths and the eyes of people, and it was horrific. And so it that's the context of this. After that plague, there's survivors, and they will come from all the nations that have attacked Jerusalem. And during the millennial reign, they will go up year after year to worship the king, the Lord Almighty, and to celebrate the festival of tabernacles. And if any of the people of the earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord Almighty, they will have no reign. So I think that that's a good depiction in Jeremiah 33 of that which will happen in the millennial reign, as stated in Zechariah 14. It goes on to say, This is what the Lord Almighty says, In this place, desolate and without people or animals, in all its towns, there will be again pastures for shepherds to rest their flocks. In the towns of the hill country, of the western foothills and of the Negev, in the territory of Benjamin, in the villages around Jerusalem, and in the towns of Judah, flocks will again pass under the hand of the one who counts them, says the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. Here where it says flocks will again pass under the hand of the one who counts them, that reminded me of the job that was given to Adam to name all of the animals. And we know that through Adam, sin was brought into the world, right? But Jesus Christ was the perfect man who came and is able to restore this earth back to the intentions that God had for it in the beginning, back to Eden. And this is a restoration of Eden, and we see that in the book of Revelation. There's a passage about all things being restored to how God intended it to be. And so here we see the Lord is the one bringing about this perfect peace and ruling and reigning on earth. It says, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. And we know who this is. This is Jesus Christ. He is the righteous branch. We are connected to him. We are in Christ. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called the Lord, our righteous Savior. Wow. For this is what the Lord says, David will never fail to have a man to sit on the throne of Israel, nor will the Levitical priests ever fail to have a man to stand before me continually to offer burnt offerings, to burn grain offerings, and to present sacrifices. So I was always kind of wondering about that vision and never really fully got an understanding of it. And though I connected the judgment to the tribulation, I didn't really have a confirmation of the threes and uh, what the Lord is really showing me. But after yesterday and seeing, you know, the sticker on that car and feeling like the Holy Spirit was showing me Jeremiah 33, 3, and reading the context, I truly believe the Lord was showing me judgment as the coming tribulation and the threshing floor. But for the body of Christ, there is hope because we know that we will be taken to be 
with the Lord. And there's hope for the Jews as well because there will be a remnant that is saved and that will be brought into the millennial reign. So I hope this encourages you to study the scriptures and search the scriptures because I truly believe that the Lord will show us amazing unsearchable things if we call out to Him. And when we're reading His Word and we have the Holy Spirit, He will reveal things that we have never seen before, even if we read them many times. So I believe right now the Lord is speaking to brothers and sisters in Christ everywhere and pouring out His Spirit and giving gifts that kind of like Jeremiah, he was told by the Lord what was going to come. And we have God's word. We already know what's coming. But right now the Lord is really showing it to us and making it so urgent for us and revealing things that have been confusing in the past or have been hidden in the past. I know in the book of Daniel it talks about how Many will go to and fro and knowledge will increase. And I truly believe the closer we get to this time period of the tribulation of the Lord's coming, that we're going to understand things in Scripture that generations prior never understood and they couldn't see it. We actually see things playing out. We see the technologies. We understand how the whole world could look on the two witnesses in the streets because of the advancement technology. There's so many things that we can understand right now by the power of the Holy Spirit and by observation and of what's happening in the world that prior generations couldn't. So keep looking up, stay in the Word, keep your eyes on Jesus and go to him constantly as these days get darker. He is our light and I hope you have a blessed day.